I am Johnny R. Turner, and I was at the March on Washington on August 28, 1963. I was the first person in my family to have an opportunity to go to college. I was on four-year scholarship, fully paid, and this was my chance. But I didn't care about that. I remembered how I felt that day when I had to walk to the back of that bus. And I was willing to sacrifice anything. Plus, I had been a follower and a believer in Dr. King and the nonviolent movement and all of the great things that he had done. So I believed in nonviolence. When I got to Washington, D.C., I was amazed. I had never seen that many people in one setting. And they anticipated that we were going to be rabble rousers and troublemakers. But we defied the odds. We proved them wrong because we believed in the cause. Everybody on that bus had on a suit, every man. Each one of us was dressed to the best of our ability. In fact, we probably were, under today's standards, we were overdressed. I was amazed at those big buildings. Can you imagine coming from Memphis back in 1963 and going to Washington, D.C., the capital city? But the most amazing thing was the numbers of people that just kept coming and coming and coming. And when Dr. King delivered his masterpiece, I have a dream. And it was as if it was contagious because everybody around me was spellbound. It was like nothing I had ever experienced before. It just changed my whole life, my whole perspective. I became more active in the NAACP. I served as its president. My life has been about making this world a better place for the least of these, my brothers even in the legislature. Sometimes they call me the conscience of the legislature. We are all children of God, and that has been my philosophy. That has been the way that that message that Dr. King gave that day, that he hoped that one day that his four little children would live in a world where they would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That's my dream. That's what I work for every day. I work for the homeless. I work for the people who have mental illness. I work for those who cannot speak for themselves. And all of this is the result of not only my life experiences, but that experience on August 28, 1963, in Washington, D.C., when Dr. King gave that masterpiece, I have a dream. This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.